our topic today is so you want to use video in D2L. And that is a super broad topic, even though it seems like a very simple question, okay? Um, the point of today is trying to take kind of that very complex topic and boil it down to some essentials and boil it down kind of to some details and hopefully make it a little bit less overwhelming, yeah? Um, the way we're gonna do that, We've got the agenda here on the board. I'm gonna go through just some techie kind of basics, like this is the stuff you have to know. Um, we're gonna talk about adding a video. We're gonna go through the video flow chart, which is what you have in front of you. Um, Paul has generously agreed to be a case study, so we're gonna kind of model how you might go through that process with Paul. And then we're gonna let you guys work through the flow chart on your own to figure out some different kinds of video that you would like to add and some ways you would like to do that. And then based on how you've decided you would like to add video or you would like to try, um, then we'll demo as many of those specific ways as we can. There are, because there are so many different ways to add video, obviously I can't show you all of them. All right, let's dive in. So, techie things that you need to know first, this is on the handout that you have that's the wonderful world of video. Just kind of some basic technical knowledge. The first thing is when you're talking about video, you're either talking about them being a file on your computer or you're talking about them being somewhere in the cloud, okay? The one that we're probably the most familiar with is number two, which is the cloud-based multimedia. That's when we get into YouTube. We get into audio files that might be on SoundCloud or Vimeo or things like that. Um, YouTube is probably the most common one that most people are familiar with. So a lot of times when people say, I wanna add a video, they're really just talking about a YouTube video, okay? But the other side to that is number one, which is the file types that can be uploaded directly into D2L. And sometimes this can be really intimidating for people. They don't, aren't familiar with file types and file extensions and things like that. Um, so what you need to know is that if you're dealing with a file, a video file, it's going to be that the video is actually saved onto your computer and it's gonna be saved more than likely in one of these formats, okay? It might be a .mov file, it might be a .wav file, it might be a .m4v file, if, and those are all video types. B is gonna be audio, and so that might be a .mp3 or a .mp4, okay? I'm not expecting you to have any of that memorized, but I do want you to know that when I'm talking about, or when somebody asks you, okay, is this file saved onto your computer? Do you know what kind of file it is? The answer we're looking for is it's an MOV file, or it's a WAV file, or it's an M4V file, okay? The reason you might have one of those files saved is let's say you used your webcam and you just opened up your webcam software and you recorded like a video of you talking, okay? That's gonna get saved somewhere to your computer in one of those types of files, okay? If, you, if somebody sends you a video via email and it's something that's an attachment, chances are that's gonna be a video that's saved into one of those file types, okay? Um, if somebody sends you a video and it's a link, then that's gonna be your YouTube or your cloud-based email, all right? Questions on that. What, has any situations come up where you've had to deal with video that you kind of wondered what type it was? Okay, I've got WMV files. Yep. Will those work? Yes, th so those, those are, are yeah, those are all different okay options, but I do believe when we get specifically into talking about adding those into D2L, yeah, that is one of the types that can be added. Great question. Any other questions about that? We're kind of doing the lightning round on the tech stuff because we want to get into the flow chart and the demo. So, any other questions? This may be silly, but if you ask me what kind of file I have and I don't know what it is, will I be able to go somewhere to find what it is? That is such a good question. Yes, you can. So, on, are you a Mac or PC person? A PC. So on your PC, let me just escape out of here and just show you. I don't know if we have any video saved on this or not. Probably not on this computer. Um, but by default on a PC, it's not going to show you that file extension. Yeah, and I don't have any on here. Um, but there's a way that when you click on it, you can hit say like show extension. And that's going to tell you, it's going to add those three little letters that appear at the end of it. Okay, and you can also set your computer, like I have mine set to this, that the default, it shows those extensions by default. So it's, you want to know the file extension. Sure, it's going to show us with the document. Yeah, so good. Assign, just be Absolutely. Yeah. So let's go to a, oh, come on. Mm -hmm. We've got some on the desktop, I, oh, I know no, we do. They took what? They took everything They took, ev okay, so they recently uploaded, let's just do this. 
let's just make one really quick because this is important. Um, they just recently updated our computer, so bear with my ignorance as to how this computer exactly works. Um, but with Word, what we're talking about when we have that file extension is it's going to be that dot .doc. Okay, it's the same kind of comment. So test, we'll just save it. We're going to save it to the desktop, sure. And we're going to save it, save as type. Notice that the file name here just says test. Okay, but if I go to my desktop, oh, come on, there it is. Okay, so I can tell a little bit by the picture. You'll notice that like this little icon would look different depending on what kind of file it is. But if I do this and I go properties, okay, first of all, there I can see my type of file. Right, it's got that dot docx, so that's a good way you can get to it. Everybody's computer is going to be a little different depending on your operating system, but so watch me be a liar about where to find that advanced. And if anybody is an expert, let me know. Um, but really, the fastest way, if you can just do properties, you're going to see it on there. Yeah, because if you look at type of file, mm -hmm. yep, right there, yeah. dot docx. Yeah. So, so that's that's going to give you that information. The more you get familiar with it, you're going to recognize those icons, and you'll know that you know some of them represent different types of files and things like that. But doing the show properties, you should be able to tell what kind of file that is. All right. Any other questions? All right. Let's move on. Okay. The next question is the techie thing is video. What you need if you're going to create them. Okay. And some of this kind of goes without saying, but it it bears repeating for something for you to consider. Most times if you create a video, you're going to include your voice in some way, right? Not every video has to have your picture, but generally if we're making a video, it's going to be something happening while we talk. So in order to get that, you need to have some sort of microphone. Um, if you are on a Mac computer, if you have like a Mac laptop that has a microphone built into it, and that works perfectly fine, you're going to get decent audio with that. Um, but I don't know of any PCs that actually have a mic built in. So if you have a PC or any sort of computer that doesn't have a mic built in, you're going to need some sort of microphone to record, okay? That might be your Skype headset. If you've got Skype set up, that Skype headset would work as that microphone. Um, we have one here. Apologies to the recording because I just shook the mic around. But this is a mic that Seedle has that you can actually check out. So you're welcome to use that if you need, if you need a microphone. Um, we also have some headsets and some different things. So... Basically, you just need something that's going to record your audio. Um, as far as quality goes, if you were going to purchase something, you do not have to spend a lot of money unless you're doing like you're recording music or you need something that's just sort of pristine recording. Um, a cheap microphone is going to be perfectly fine. You're going to be happy with those results. The next thing on the list is a camera. Okay, This is if you want to record your face. Um, so if you want to record your face, again, a lot of Macs have the built-in webcam. Not very many PCs do, so you would need something to plug in. This is the one that I have on my computer over in my office. This is a free one that I got at a workshop. So again, you don't have to spend a lot of money to get a decent amount. Um, Seedle also has some that people can check out. So if either one of those are something that you don't have, let us know. We can get one to you to use. Um, if you have a webcam, that's also going to have a microphone built in. So if you have a webcam, even if you just want to record audio, you can use your webcam audio to be that audio source. Okay. Um, the last thing, is, and this really is the case if you're going to be showing your face, is just some sort of good light source. Um, nothing, I'm not going to say nothing is worse, but it's not very fun to watch a video where somebody's sitting in front of a window and like it's all lit up behind them and then they're black. It looks like they're in the witness protection program or something like that. Um, so making sure that you have a light source that is shining on your face is really going to help make that video pop. Um, the faculty reading room over there is a great place to record videos because it's got a nice big window and it's got a lot of light. And so that's kind of why we have that pretty background in there is that you can sit in front of that and get a really nice video recording. Um, when I'm recording that, I'll often just turn ever so slightly so that I get a little more of the light on my face and it just makes it look really nice. But really, that's all you need as far as stuff. You need something to capture sound, you need something to capture video, and then some way to make it look good, okay? Um, then there's always software that you need, right? Not every computer is gonna have this built in. 
If you are doing video of your face within D2L, you can use D2L's built-in video note tool. You don't need to have any extra software. We'll get into kind of the specifics of these different ones, but other tools you could use if you didn't want it to go into D2L or it was for something else. QuickTime is a software that's built in on pretty much all Macs, and that works really well to record audio, capturing your screen, and also capturing video. That's a good one for that. If you're on a PC, you probably have webcam software that's going to do the same thing. So like when I plug this in to my PC over there, it downloads a Logitech software platform, and I can use that to take video with this camera. And it just saves it as one of those video files, OK? Um, there's also some fancier softwares if you want to get into editing, and we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Camtasia is the one that we tend to use around here, and we've got it on a laptop you can check out. It's also on the computer in there, um, but that's going to allow you to do some fancier capturing and some fancier video editing and things like that. Um, the last option I want to point out, and I don't want to discredit it at all, is that pretty much everybody has one of these that they carry around with them. And these have really good cameras anymore, and they have really good video capabilities. And they also, there's a lot of apps that are really nice that you can get both for phones and for tablets that will let you capture that video and edit it really nicely. So don't count out the fact that this is a really helpful thing that you can use to capture video. Um, if you use it, it will be saving it as a video file. So you can choose to either upload that file like straight to YouTube from your phone or something like that, or you can like email it to yourself and have it on your computer. However you normally get stuff off of here is the process that you would use, okay? All right, more options of software. I told you we would get to some more of these options, right? Um, narrated PowerPoint is something that people have been asking me a lot about lately. I think people are really interested in putting lectures into a digital format. Um, narrated PowerPoint itself, if you've ever tried to share a narrated PowerPoint with people in D2L or something like that, you know that it can be kind of tricky. People have a hard time sort of viewing it properly. But you can, if you're on a PC, you can convert that narrated PowerPoint to a video file. And then you have all the sort of regular video capabilities that you can use with that. Um, if you're on a PC, there's also something called Microsoft Mix. That's a fairly new Microsoft tool. It's a plugin that you can put onto your PowerPoint. And it's really slick. It allows you to record like your face and your PowerPoint, and it puts it up into the cloud. And so it makes it really easy to share that with people. Um, again, I mentioned Camtasia. We also have that, like I said, in the faculty reading room. That's a little more robust video editor. Um, and then there's also screen capture videos. And so that's where, again, kind of the PowerPoint narrated PowerPoint slideshow option comes in. If you've ever watched one of my D2L tutorials, you've seen me capturing my screen and talking, and that's a screen capture video. Um, again, you can use QuickTime, Camtasia, or if you're an iPad user, there's an app called Explain Everything that's really good for that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of different tools that you can use. Um, what I would recommend for individual people is really going to depend on what you're familiar with, if you're on a Mac or PC, how you want to get it, where you want to do it. There's a lot of variables to that. Okay, but any questions on just kind of the plethora of options that are available? All right, the last piece, this is probably the most tricky and persnickety portion of the techie things you need to know, and this is getting your computer camera settings to play nice with whatever device you are using. Okay, especially, yes? Do we want to make it full screen again? We can make it. Where's my mouse? There we go. All right. So this is the, especially if you're plugging in something external to your computer, telling your computer to use it can kind of be a challenge. Um, one of the tools people were mentioning um, when we first walked in was UCU, which is a video conferencing tool that's part of D2L. That's something that's a piece of software that's in the cloud that uses your camera and your microphone. Okay. Especially if you're doing something that's online that wants to use your camera and microphone, that's something that's going to take a little bit of finagling because you sort of have to give the appropriate permissions for the internet to use your camera and mic. By default, our computers don't necessarily want the internet to be able to video us. Okay, that, That's a good thing. We don't want that to happen automatically. But if there's a case where we are trying to make a video, whether it's using VideoNote or UCU or what have you, 
um, we need to be able to turn that on. So if you know you're going to want to make video and you know that you know you might use some different kinds of devices to start things, I would strongly recommend getting familiar with your audio and video settings area of your computer, wherever that is. And now I've got the settings area pulled up on this computer. And this is really going to be a trial by fire because I have not done this on this computer before. But if we search for audio, manage audio devices. Okay, this is going to allow us to pick the different things that we're using for recording. And again, everybody's computer is going to be a little bit different. Um, but getting familiar with how, where those things are and which one is picked is really important. Um, so here we have the USB headset, we've got the microphone, we've got all the stuff that's hooked up to this for the Skype capabilities. But all those are there in our settings. Let me go to video and do the same thing. Device manager. And let's try sound, video, and game controller. Sure. All right, and these are the various devices. So just being able to kind of know where that is on your computer, that way if there's a problem, and let's say you're using Microsoft Mix and it can't find the right connection to connect with your webcam, you're gonna have a little bit of knowledge about where those are and how to find them. So the takeaway for this is that if you know you're gonna wanna do a lot of video, I would just plan to make a little bit of time to get those settings sort of figured out. And that's something you can always set up an appointment with me for as far as, hey, I know I'm going to want to do this. Can you help me make sure that I've got everything going where it needs to? That seems to be kind of one of those challenges that feels really big, but then once it's fixed, everything sort of opens up. Okay? Questions about that? Let me go back to my presentation. All right. And you'll notice there I have incorporate trial and error time into your planning, okay? Um, if it, this is something that I need to record this video for my class tomorrow, okay, this could be something that holds you up. And so that's why getting it sort of figured out as quickly as you can and sort of before you need it is really important, okay? All right. So then we get to the question of how do I add a video? Right? And like I said, this is the question that I get a lot from people. Hey, I want to put a video in D2L. How do I do it? Okay? You can see on the flowchart in front of you that there are a lot of pieces to that question. The first piece is creating or finding the video. Okay? Does this video already exist? If so, where? If I need to make this video, how am I going to make it? Okay? That's kind of phase one. You can see all the different options. If you were to go through all the possibilities on your flowchart, um, those are the, all the various places you could possibly end up. Okay? So that's part one, is creating and finding the video. Part two is how to share the video. Okay? So if it's a video file, who do you want to see it? Do we need to put it up online somewhere? How are we going to, get it, going to get other people to be able to see the video? And then part three come on, is kind of the optional piece, which is where do I put this into D2L? Okay? And you can have sort of any combination, exponential number of combos of those three areas. So how do I get the video? What kind of video is it? How am I sharing it? Who do I want to share it with? And then where in D2L do I put it? Okay, that is kind of the simplified version of what you have on the flowchart in front of you. Okay, so let's dig in a little bit to this flowchart and I'm going to pull it up so it's a little easier to read on the big screen. And for those of you watching at home, let's pull it up here. Cool. So this flowchart, even though it looks really overwhelming, all you have to do is answer questions and follow through. You don't have to be aware of everything that's on here. Um, the first question is going to get to that, what kind of video is it, where is it located kind of thing, okay? So the first question you add, and I'm just going to take us through the most simple route of this. The first question is, does the video you want to add currently exist or will it have to be created? Let's say it currently exists, and then we say, we go to the one to the right, where does this video currently exist? Is it a video file on someone's computer? Is it on a DVD or is it on the web? And that would be YouTube, Netflix, anything of that nature, okay? And then we go to 
is the video on YouTube or a similar site? Okay, we're gonna say yes. Then we know that we are sharing an online video, okay? Then it takes us down to the next question here, which is in what area of D2L do we want students to view this video? And those are all the places that we can share a D2L, a YouTube video in D2L. We can share it in a quiz. We can share it in the gradebook. We can share it in the content area. We can share it in a news item. We can share it in the Dropbox. We can share it in the discussion board, okay? Because a YouTube video is a link, any place you can put a link, you're gonna be able to share that video, all right? Now, if you want some specifics as to what this might look like and how do I know where I wanna put it and all of that kind of stuff, in the CETL Workshop Hub, within the module that is for this workshop, which you're gonna see now at the top of the list, I've got all of these examples of video content, okay? And this is all, okay, what does this actually look like if I put my video into D2L in this way, okay? What you're gonna see when we click through some of this, if I just kind of do the quick version, clicking through, is you're gonna see that a lot of these look pretty much the same, even though they were added using different processes. So this is a YouTube video that I've added as a link. This is a YouTube video that I've embedded in the page. This is a YouTube video added with the add video link, okay? They all look pretty darn similar. This is a video note that I've created. Video note is that one that's built into D2L. So this is what that video note would look like. This is a video file. So we talked about if you have a file on your computer and you wanna share it, um, D2L has this kind of nice video interface now. So you can actually just drag that file in like you would drag in a Word document or a PDF or something. And it's gonna play and it's gonna look pretty nice. All right, and I'm not gonna go through the whole list, but you can see just all these different examples. Here's, I'll show you the Microsoft Mix, just cause that one's a little bit different. This is an example of a quick little mix I created. And the thing I like about this. And this ooh. is a presentation that I'm recording using Microsoft Mix. This is a new plugin. Okay. The thing I like about there, it. I can switch here. through my slides. Is it, is it gives the students some control of being able to kind of click to the next slide. It kind of looks a little bit more like a slideshow. So I'm a big fan of that one. Um, if you are a PC person, I would encourage you to check it out just because I find it really easy. All right. Let's go back to our Prezi. Can I ask a question? That Absolutely. Might not be pertinent yet. Absolutely. If you want it to, if you have a video that's out there somewhere and you just want a little piece of it, can you edit it, take a clipping? Such a good question. So what you can do when you share a YouTube link, um, you can't really edit it as it exists on YouTube, right? right. Um, what you can do is you can tweak the link to be the start time. So if I don't, if I don't need the students to watch the first, let's say, 15 minutes, and I want them to start watching 15 minutes in in YouTube, and we can get into that when we get to the demo part, um, you can customize the YouTube link so that it starts at the right time. But then it ends at the end. Yeah. Okay. So and there may be other tools. I'm sure there are some other kind of fancier tools that you can use to kind of limit what you show. So if somebody knows about them, please let me know. We'll share them. Um, but generally with YouTube, you're at the mercy of what's out there, and then you just have to be really clear. Like, let's say this is for an online class. You get very clear and you say, okay, you're gonna start at this time and then you only have to watch the first minute or something like that. Um, but yeah, so the answer is kind of to your question. Any other questions before we keep moving forward? All right, so case study. I'm gonna turn it over to Paul a little bit. Um, do you want the microphone? Yes. All right, because he's gonna go through this process and go through the flow chart and all of that for you. So um, within our case study today, uh, we all have many opportunities to have video in our class. So uh, within this, we're uh, piloting a new software called Respondus Lockdown Browser currently. And um, it will allow the students to take a quiz and then they are not allowed to surf the web while they're taking this quiz. It locks down everything. Um, so I needed to find a way to present this information to the students on how to download it just in case they, they, I was not available. 
Uh, the when I did it just a week ago, I asked all the students to bring in their computers and I made them do it while they were in the room. Even though I thought I made them do it while they were in the room, I still had about only eight out of the 20 some odd students actually do it while I was there. So I got tons of emails and uh, then I had to come up with a video of how to explain this to them. So uh, this was the impetus behind this. So we went ahead and we had our first three questions, the video creation platform. We wanted to be able to share this video creation uh, to multiple users, so we decided that uh, it would also be placed in uh, the video sharing platform YouTube. So we recorded it first, and if we follow our flow chart down here, uh, it had to be created. Then what will this video show? We knew that it was going to be a computer screen with audio because we wanted them to demonstrate. Then we wanted to move further down this. Uh, will they show a PowerPoint type slides? I said no. because And so it tells us that we should use Camtasia or another extensive editing tool. This takes us now down to uh, you are sharing the video file. So how are we sharing that video file? And uh, it is going to be yeah. down. Yep. Uh, Sherry, outside of D2L, which is YouTube, and yes, and then share within the... Nope. Go up to... You have to follow that across. What area? All the way. Yep. You're sharing an online video, yep. and then you're coming back over to where we're putting it, and um, within this, I would do it in a news tool. So what we've done is we've taken this and we've gone into YouTube. We've actually uploaded the file directly here into our SEAL account. And then we've also made it unlisted if you don't want anybody to be able to search for it and find it. Uh, we have it currently open right now. And then uh, that was uploaded and we can- Going the over the Respondus tool in D2L, how to take a quiz that requires the use of Respondus. So our, our uh, student worker, Madison. You will access your quiz the same way you together. always have. When you click the quiz, you will see that it has a few new buttons. Now, we'll just stop right there. Um, the important thing, I think Amanda was talking uh, uh, about this with you, Mary, where it said share, and you can start at the time period right there. Yep. And then it will actually change 26 seconds and then you will share that directly into the link. So as I moved into the content area, and we wanted to show a video of this, I could come up and I could add in mm -hmm. video file, and then I could embed the code. I didn't you save it, sorry. Copy it. Yeah, I go back to video. Now we've uploaded that directly into the D2L page. And that is usually Yeah, it's right there. Right there at the bottom. Yep. So that's how we would open. Another thing that uh, I did within one of my classes, and I just put this together this morning, so it was, it's not the most beautifully done thing, is I went into my dance history course, and in the news feature, there was a, uh, I created a new news item, and in the bottom, Amanda referred to video note through D2L, and I pressed record video, and I actually, c you can record up to five minutes of a video, and I put that together, and you can literally say, follow these instructions to do said feature. And the key is, is it specifically if you're looking at a, a Mac or a PC, looking at the camera is very difficult to have your script down below and then keep on looking directly at the camera or else you're looking down the whole time. Uh, 
but an example of this So when you put actually play this on a, a different computer, it's much louder. But you'll see a lot of the script and uh, everything that you want to say directly on here. This is a project I'm working on is how to get an A, which is a three-part si series telling students how to use discussions and then how, how to uh, write more effectively within the Dropbox feature. So that is a quick and dirty version of our case study. And once again, how it was all put together. Amanda? All right. Here you go. Thank you. All right, so now, now it is you guys' turn. So we are now to the activity portion of our workshop. And what I want you to do is you've all got the little flow chart in front of you, okay? I want you to think of a video project that you are going to want to include in D2L at some point in the future, okay? Think hypothetically, um, and I want you to go through the flow chart. And the important thing about this is as you get to a colored square, okay, whatever appears in that colored shape, I want you to write over here on the side, okay? So, for example, in Paul's example of the video, right, have to be created, I think we ended up with, you should use Camtasia or another editing tool. So, I would write Camtasia here, okay? Then for sharing, I think we ended up here. So, you would add online video sharing. And then the last piece, in what area of D2L do you want students to view this video? Where we put it was in content. So, then you would write here, share within the content area, okay? When you get done with all that, excuse me, when you get done with all that, then I'm going to ask you to go back into D2L and in the CETL Workshop Hub class, in the content module for this particular workshop, there is an in-workshop survey, choose your own adventure. And basically this is going to allow you to input whatever you put into those three shapes. Okay, so the first question is what platform are you using to create and edit your videos? Whatever you write down from your flowchart, you're going to check that box. Okay, if there's a couple that you know you're going to want to do, you can check both boxes if you have a couple things you'd like to see. Um, the second area, how will you share your video? Video file, online video, video note will be the three options that pop up there. And then where will you put your video in D2L? Okay. So what I'd like you all to do, go through the flowchart, keep track of what you want to do, and then input your results in that survey based on what you guys are the most interested in doing and seeing that's what we'll demo for the rest of our time. Okay, any questions before I turn you loose? All right, go wild. Okay, I do have a question Yeah. wasn't technically pertinent to the whole group. I've been using a narrative PowerPoint. Is the use Microsoft Mix over that basically just so that it's more compatible with more people? Yeah, the challenge that happens, and you may have found this already with PowerPoint or not, is that when you upload a PowerPoint file, especially a narrated one, it's reliant on the student's version of PowerPoint and right. the student's ability to start that video yeah. in order for them to be able to watch it effectively. Um, I've had a lot of people have problems with that. So yeah. they've tried to upload it, they drag it in just like they drag anything else in, and then the, the students just like can't get to it for whatever reason. Um, if there are things that currently exist, what I would probably encourage you to do is, and you're on a PC, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, so do the, you can export those narrative PowerPoints as video. When I did that, it didn't, like, it moved forward at a faster pace than what I was speaking at on the audio. There are some different options okay. in that process. So like one of them is export it, but only spend blah, blah, blah amount of time per slide. Oh. But then there's another one that's like use the narrations and the timing oh. that I did. That would be useful. So if that's something you have questions about, we can demo it here or just set up time with me and I can okay. help you get those. Thank yeah. You. Any other questions as you're going through this? All right. Carry on. All right. Got six responses. I think that means everybody's gone through it. So let's look and see what y'all are the most interested in doing. It looks like 
People are saying, I will create edit with Microsoft Mix, very cool. And I will create edit with Camtasia. And then I will create edit with Narrative PowerPoint as the other ones. And then we're gonna share this by sharing a video file and by sharing an online video. So, and then where we put it in D2L, we'll put it in the content. So we're gonna try to demo as much of this as I can. Now, I'm sitting here realizing that Microsoft Mix is something I'm gonna have to download onto this computer because they just updated our computer. So I'm gonna show you how that process is gonna work since it seems like that's what a lot of people are the most interested in. So we will cross our fingers that I have download rights on here. So I'm just gonna search for Microsoft Mix, mix.office.com, and then you do have to have kind of the later version of PowerPoint, so if you're working on an old version of PowerPoint, you'll want to get that updated. But get Office Mix, cross our fingers. I'm going to sign in with my work or school account. Oops, not Eddie. EDU. Luckily, it's letting me download this. Again, as you were mentioning, if it's a school computer, sometimes you may have to get IT's help to get it onto your machine. That's something that can be something that has to happen. Let's see. Cross our fingers. So it only works on PCs. It only works on PCs. Unfortunately, there's not a Mac version. The Mac version I would highly recommend is using um, QuickTime, which I guarantee you have on there. So let's install. Ooh. Yes, please. And what this is going to do is it's going to put just another tab on your PowerPoint bar, like that PowerPoint <laughs> ribbon that you have at the top, and then you can say record Microsoft Mix, okay? What I'm not sure about is if I have something recorded um, that's already existing, if I can convert that to the Mix format, you may have to re-record. That would be the only piece, the only piece in there. Um, but we will cross our fingers that this is going to work appropriately, PowerPoint. Loading add-ins, beautiful. All right, so when you use it for the first time, it's going to want to tell you all about Mix and give you the tutorials and all of that jazz. This is just kind of a, present, a demo presentation that pops up. Um, but if I go to Mix, there are some things in here just to make you aware that I haven't even dealt with. One is screen recording, quizzes, slide recording, etc. So let me go ahead and just hit slide recording. Nope, there we go. Now, this is where knowing those devices is going to come in handy. I should have, we'll see if it's, if it's read my webcam. Logitech, let's try that one. Yeah. So here's my webcam. Whoops, oh my goodness. Too many sound things. Apologies to those of you watching at home. So here's my video. Ah, hi, beautiful. Okay, so I've got that selected um, for sound. Sure, we'll use the speakerphone. It's not going to be great sound, but it'll work. And then we've got it already, and I'm going to hit record. Okay, this is me recording. I'm drawing on the slide. Um, if I had more slides, I could click through them. Um, I can point things out. Oh, yay, there's an arrow. Here's a smiley face. This whole time it is also recording my face. Boom. Stop recording. <laughs> that is beautiful. I love it. Okay, so this is my mix. I can move this. If I hit close, I can move my little face video to other places if I want which is kind of nice depending on your, how your slide is lined up. Um, and then it comes time to publish, and there's different ways you can publish it. So uploading to Office Mix is probably what I would recommend as a first choice. It puts it up in the cloud. Um, you can add it just as a link into D2L. Or the other option is if you export it as a video, then you can upload it as a video file. So if you don't want to put it up in the cloud for some reason, you can keep it all on your computer by exporting to video. Um, because 
I don't want to necessarily upload this up into the cloud. I'm going to do the export to video option so you can see that. Come on. Really? Export to video. Okay, I'm going to go compute. I don't want to do full HD because that's going to take forever. We'll do the internet one next. Okay, and then this is just like saving. You'll notice when we're talking about file types, this is gonna save it as an MP4 video file. Let's just put it on the desktop. We'll leave it as presentation one. Sure, sounds good. The best thumbnail ever taken of me ever. Okay, your video has been exported. And so then if I go to my desktop, here is my presentation one. It's just going to open like a normal okay, video. Okay, this is the recording. I'm drawing on the slides. Um, if I had more slides, I could click through them. Okay, because it is a video, I don't have that functionality of like clicking from slide to slide. That's something on a longer presentation I would think is kind of important for students. Um, but on the upside, this is something students could download onto their own machines. And so if you've got somebody that streaming is not really possible because they have crummy Wi-Fi at their house or something of that nature. Um, this is something they could download when they're on campus and then go watch later on. And that's probably something we should have mentioned earlier as far as when you're deciding the means by which you want to do this. If it's something that's in the cloud, people have to be online in order to view it. Okay. If it's something that's a file, they would have to be online to download it initially, but then they can download it and view it offline. So something just to consider as you're thinking about this, especially if you're getting into like longer, more lecture videos where it's going to take a while to download or, you know, it might be something they have to watch in a couple different pieces because it's a longer recording. Um, first of all, as a best practice, I would recommend chunking that into some smaller pieces just for the sheer technical fact of having to watch it. Right. Um, but anywho, I've now got this video here. And then from here, the process is exactly like it would be with any other file on my computer. And this was something that it looked like a lot of you were interested in. So let's just show you. I'm gonna go back to D2L. First of all, raise your hand if you've ever uploaded like a document into D2L before. Yeah, super easy. Raise your hand if you've done it via drag and drop. Okay, same process, all right? So let's go to my little demo area. Examples of video content. There's a couple ways I can do it. If I want to make this just drag and droppable, which is going to be kind of a pain with all the stuff on here, but minimize, minimize everything, everything. Okay. So there's my video. Oh, come on. Aren't you glad when it happens to me and it's not just you? Okay. So then I can just literally drag this right into D2L. And with this sort of new, um, video capabilities that they have in a recent upgrade. <coughs> now I can just add that. My students can view it right there. So that's a really <coughs> nice, handy way to do it. Okay. <coughs> Any questions about that particular process? So far, other than the fact that it's not available on my Mac, I honestly have yet to find something I don't like about Microsoft Mix. I'm sure I will find things. Um, but so far, it seems to be really robust and really easy to use. And so it's, it's definitely one I would recommend. Plus, it's free. Um, let's go back to our chart and just see what other things I am missing. Have a time limit of how much you can go into D2L long speed? No, no. Um, I mean, it's, it's the capabilities of whatever your computer would hold, right? Now, I would encourage you, especially when you're thinking about putting stuff online, don't make people sit through an hour and a half narrated PowerPoint presentation. Um, and you and you laugh, but I actually, for no college represented in this room, I've had to do those conversions for people. Um, so it is something that people do. Don't, please, please what don't do that. I would recommend thinking in terms of chunks. So you really, people will say, what should my chunk length be? And I've heard everything from five minutes to 25 minutes. Um, I would probably try to keep 15 minutes as about a cap. Um, and that's really just for not only for students' attention spans, but also for dealing with the technology. If you're asking them to watch a video file and it's something they have to download, that hour-long video file is going to be a big file. And while you certainly can do it, and as far as I know, there's no limits we're going to bump into in D2L or on your computer, um, you do have the limit of data can only go through the Wi-Fi so fast. 
And so if it is a big honking video file, and these are going to take up a lot of storage and they're going to be big, um, it's just going to take forever to go up through that funnel to get into the cloud. So shorter is better for technical reasons, but then also just for student you know, attention and clarity and, and learning and that kind of stuff. Yeah, did that answer your question? Sort of, I know it was kind of a, a way around it. Any other questions? You said, don't talk. If you haven't told me, I will make fun of you. Well, and, and, and you know, it makes sense because we're, exactly, we're used to those, so to, to that being in class, and you certainly can, like, technically it is possible to do that. Um, I just wouldn't, you know, I, first of all, for you, you have to sit there and record that whole thing. So as the person, granted you, especially with mix, you can like record one slide at a time, but so many people, if they don't want to do editing, if they're going to try to do a full 40 minutes plus video, that feels like a lot of pressure. You know, and if you're like me, when you're recording something for a video, you feel far more pressure to be, have it be perfect than if I was just talking and giving the lecture, right? If I'm just talking to you, um, you know, I, if I make a mistake or I drop the thing, like it doesn't feel like a big deal. Um, if I'm recording that in a lecture, it feels to me like a much bigger deal. And I don't think I'm alone in that. So if you chunk it down into, you know, either four 10 minute things or two, even two 20 minute things is going to make it a little more palatable, then it's more manageable for you to do. You don't feel so overwhelmed. You don't get to minute 37 and go, shoot, you know, you make a mistake and you have to start over or you feel like you have to start over. So just for you as the recorder and your students viewing it, I would chunk it down into, into 10 to 15 to 20, something along those lines. Yeah. What other questions do you have? It is almost one o'clock and I want to make sure that if you have questions, we have answered them. Anybody else? I might add one idea though to this mm -hmm. chunks of time. What I've done in my online classes, I'll give them a, usually a five to seven minutes and then I will um, put a little assessment at the end of it as well that they watched it, but also it kind of breaks it up to where, okay, I've got this part down, now I can go to the next one. So you can embed the assessment or you can say, okay, now go to, you know, the assignments area and click on quiz and, this and do something. Yeah, I'm going to repeat that for anybody that's watching this. On the, I've been forgetting to do that for anybody that's watching the capture, but the suggestion was um, to put little questions and little quizzes and little mini assessments as you're breaking up that video, and I would agree with that 100%. Um, I think one of the things in the online space especially that we run into is how do we make sure students are actually like watching the video, but not only that, that they're watching it and giving it their attention, and it's not just playing while they do something else, right? Like having some sort of content check where we're asking the stupid questions, right, that they won't be able to answer unless they've watched it um, is really going to sort of make sure everybody's on the same page, then you can get into that higher level learning and those kind of yeah, that is a great suggestion. What other questions or suggestions do y'all have? Any best practices for uploading to um, YouTube? Best practices for uploading to YouTube in terms of file types or length or? I've never done it. Okay. So I'm presuming I have, I have no idea. I'm okay. assuming I have to make an account of some kind. Yes. Do you have recommendations about that? Kind yes. Of thing? So options that you have for uploading um, videos to YouTube, you do have to have an account. We have a Seedle account, so one option for you, if you don't wanna deal with the upload process, um, we can put it on our Seedle account and then give you the link, that's certainly one option. Um, if you wanna control it, then you would have to create an account. <coughs> because it's YouTube and that's a Google product or a Google tie-in, if you have a Gmail account or a Google Drive account, you actually already have a YouTube account. Um, you just have to switch over to your YouTube, so let me go to here. Um, here's my Google Drive screen. One of these options is gonna be YouTube. And then right now, I'm logged in with the same account I was in my Google Drive, okay? Then it's pretty easy, you can upload the video right there, okay? Google tries really hard to be intuitive, and I think they do a pretty good job. You just click the button and it's gonna light, here, I'll just show you. It's gonna say drag and drop the file here and you just drag and drop that video file right in there. I will tell you, depending on the size, it's gonna take a bit. So we do a thing, um, Karen Miller over in the music school does video recordings of her students' performances and she wants to share those and that's a big project and something that I have my Stu Pro help her with because she's doing like 12 plus videos at a time, like somebody kinda has to sit there and watch it for 
at least an hour, okay? So that's the one kind of best practices as you're thinking about it. Build in, if it's a big file or it's a lot of files, build in kind of that upload babysit time um, because you're gonna wanna watch it. Now, if it's a video, I uploaded some on my personal channel last night that were like a minute and a half long. Takes five minutes to upload. I mean, it's pretty fast, but if you're getting into these you know, 20 minute lecture videos or hour and a half lecture videos, that's gonna take a longer time, especially if you're recording something with a really high resolution. And so the higher resolution your video file is, the bigger it is and the longer it's gonna take to upload. Does it answer your question? Yes. Cool. All right, it is after one. I, don't, I want you to be able to go if you need to. I'm happy to stick around and answer questions. Um, the last thing I will just point out is that once I get you all accredited for being here, I have to check a box that says you are here, you're going to see this video evaluation survey, workshop evaluation survey up here. It won't be there yet. It, you'll see it as soon as I say, yep, they were here. Um, that is how you get your completion certificate. So you fill that out. You will probably get nasty emails from the system if you don't fill it out. So be prepared for that. You will get one like every day for a week. Um, that survey is going to close down next week, okay, because we don't want you to be filling out surveys for workshops that happened months ago, right? We want it to be pretty timely. Um, so if you do that today, ideally, then you won't get any nasty emails from the system. Um, and then you'll get that certificate. And the certificate, when you first log in, you're gonna get a little pop-up that says, hey, you were here, you got your certificate. But you can also always just go to awards. And then it's gonna show you, oh, this is Paul's list, but you can see all the workshops that he's been here for and all of the beautiful certificates he's gotten and you can download them onto your computer that way. All right, any other questions or thoughts? I'm happy to stick around and answer anything else that you guys wanna know, but for the masses and for the captures, are there any other questions that we have? All right, thanks guys, thank you so much.